Hi everybody. Today I wanted to paint this beautiful fuchsia. I'm thinking about oh, possibly doing a class in these, so I thought this might be fun to play with today, and I absolutely love these colors. The colors I'm going to be using, and by the way, this is my Artisto pads, which you know in the in beginning of every video I share this. I just love these. If you're not using them, uh, a great little pad. It's 140 pound cold press. It's got the binder so you can keep them all together. I have stacks of these and I look through them. I date them. I take notes. It's just a wonderful way to keep all my practice paintings together. And if I did want to gift them, uh, it's got a perforated line here that I can tear it off and gift, but it's got a lovely texture. All right, and I believe uh, I buy them in the three pack, so that's how I've been uh, purchasing them. I'm using today my two brushes, my eight Velvet Touched Round, which as you know is my go-to favorite. I'm also using for a little bit of the smaller lines and details where I want to get into some, maybe some tight little spaces. I'll be using my six Princeton Six Long Round. I love that. I will link those for you if you're interested in those. And today I'm using um, my, I've got my two containers of water here, my Meaden Wells, which I absolutely love. They're really sturdy. It's uh, two water containers, one to wash, one to rinse. And I've got my beautiful Meaden palette here, very sturdy. A lot of you ask me for palettes and products that could ship outside the US, and Meaden does. So I'll give you those links if you like. This palette is really sturdy. What I love about it is this huge mixing space uh, that really comes in handy for me. And then I'm using my My Lang palette uh, just because I paint so much and it's a good affordable palette for me. My go-to really if I'm doing a commission or something would be Winsor Newton. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to be using, let's see here, the only thing about this palette is it's a little heavy to move, which is good, and why some of you asked me for a heavier palette that didn't move all over the place. This is it, but look at how beautiful these large wells are. I just love them. Um, let's see here. Let's see what color is that. Okay, so that's my, uh, what, you could use Quin Magenta for that in this palette. They're calling it Deep Purple, so it's got a lot of blue in it. Uh, this is, let's see, let me get this other color that I absolutely love in the My Lang palette, and it's called Violet Red. Let's get that. Look at how much space I have here. Yeah, that's the color I want. Okay, and I'm gonna be using all of these in all the different color values, but these two will be kind of the undertone of everything. Uh, you could even really use your Opera Rose or in the My Lang palette, it would be their Rose Red, which is really a beautiful color. Let's see if I can fit that in. It's almost, I like it almost as much as like the Quinn Magenta or a little deeper color than the Opera Rose. So these are my three colors I'll be working with. And of course, my um, Sap and Olive Green. So we're going to be painting this fun little um, fuchsia here. So let's go ahead and start. I think what I wanna do is building layers, starting with your lightest colors first. I'm going to do a light purple. So just picking up some of that. Let me see if I can get my palette in here for you. There we go. So this is just a very watered down version of your Quinn Magenta and Windsor Newton or your Violet. I've added a lot of water to that. It's very movable. It's like tea. Uh, it's probably, I'd say 20% water, 80% pigment. And I'm going to go in and just put a light wash over this. It's kind of where I'm gonna start. So I want 
this using the side of my brush. I want this to be just a pale wash on the flower. And as you know, look at the white space I'm leaving, okay? So make sure and get that in there. Let's do another one right here using the side of my brush. There we go. And leaving white space in here. And then let's go in again. So I'm basically coating all of these with some of that beautiful purple, just using again the side of my brush, go in here, and then we can go in and add some glazes to darken some areas. I'm trying to, so as you see here, I've got even a lighter value wash. And I'm gonna go in here really didn't want everything to blend together like that, but that's okay. Going in the background, leaving those whites. So just practice leaving those whites in there. I think that's really pretty. Right now, all I'm doing is this wash. Now, if I have some petals and things I can simply wipe off my brush go in and pick that up see how that just soaked that right up dry brush go in and just soak lift that up there you go let's keep moving here uh, let's see what else I want this to be kind of a light color. I'm going to go in here. Now again, if I'm getting any type of puddle, I can pick that up if I like. So I'm just starting with this and then we'll go back in and add in some dark colors. Okay, so I think I've basically got them all covered. There we go. These, I'm going to make that beautiful, gosh, I don't have my opera rose here. Let's see. Oh, I do. I really like that opera rose. And I could get that actually by, let's matter of fact, do that. Let's add, um, let me see something here. Let's add a little white to this and create another color, okay? So let me grab some of my white. I didn't plan on this, adding white, so I don't have my white tube of paint here. I'm just going to, yeah, look at that. I have to be real careful because I'm trying to use this area here. So that's awfully pretty. Now what I'm gonna do I can fit this in is create a very light version of that pink almost like a pastel because that's what I want to start with there we go that's pretty so I mixed a tiny bit of white with that um, red and then I'm going to go in and do a wash on these upper petals coming out like that there we go so look at that, that's like a version of the opera rose, right? Fun. And then using the point of my brush to get into those small areas, and this is where I really love this Princeton six long round. There we go. And we're gonna go back in and darken those. So right now I'm just doing this background wash. Might even add a little bit more water. So this is very light here because that's the top of the petal 
And now I'll go in with some green. You can use sap green, tree green, whatever green you like. I have kind of my go-to greens. Use the side of my brush and just give that a little coating. There we go. Always leaving some white space. Wiping off my brush and picking up that green. Okay, so there we go. We've got our base. Now let's go in and start adding in that second value, which means just a little bit darker. Um, let's see, let's go in with this and just darken that pink that we already made. And, oop. And kind of touch in at the base. That's typically where I will start adding in my darker values. Now, it's spreading on its own, but I'm going to wash and rinse my brush, tap it off, and we're just going to feather that edge out. Kind of help draw it out. There we go. Feather that edge, just like that. Wash and rinse my brush. I feel like I want to add a tiny bit of shadow in here. There we go. soften that edge a tiny bit with the tip of your brush just damp. There, I think that's perfect. Just a damp brush. Like that. Okay, let's start working in here with these purples. I'm gonna add a little darker purple over here. Now that is a really, really dark purple. So I wanna lighten that up a tiny bit. Don't wanna quite go in with my darkest purple value yet. And let's come in here. Cause I feel like there might be a shadow right there since it's under this petal. Just go in and I just barely touch that with some water. Now in this purple, I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of that purple and that pink. And let's touch in here. Wash, rinse my brush. There we go. So pretty. Go in with some more of that purple, add a little bit into that pile of water that we have. And using the side of the tip of my brush, just like that. Now wash and rinse my brush. It's just really repeating this same process over and over and over. So I'm feathering that side there. I just continue using some of my water to feather out that side. And let's see, let's go into some of these. And go in here. I'm really just using different values as well so I can pull out the different petals. So wash and dry my brush, feather that edge. Pulling it out, push, pull. There you go. And maybe a lighter value on the other side. Tap my brush, pick some up. So look how interesting that becomes. And we've got all these different values that we're playing with. Go in with a little darker value. Again, I feel like these leaves in the background could be darker. So I get some paint on my brush. 
and add that in, wash, rinse my brush. See how already that created like this feeling of it being tucked in and feather it out. There we go. So that really immediately just brings it into that background. Uh, let's see, we could go in here and maybe just for some interest, add a tiny bit of that pink in there as well. I've got a little bit of a puddle there. So see what I do? I just pick it up. Don't want that puddle. And then I wash and rinse my brush and pull it out. There we go. So again, you're creating this depth in there. I'm gonna go into this very light uh, wash of purple and add some in here. Just constantly playing with a little bit different mixes and values. Wash and rinse my brush. Go in and pull that out, but I'm still leaving that white space, just like that. Yeah, I like that. And then I feel like I wanna put a little bit of shadow in here. And that's really gonna make this petal pop out because it's up against that white area. There we go. Look how pretty that is. And I can touch in a tiny bit in here with some of that. So now as I keep working this, I'm adding in a little bit of that pink, but look at the interest here. Let's go back in here since that's dry now and pick up some of our darker value of that pink and play with that a bit. Okay, wash rinse my brush. And feather it out. There we go. Since this is the lip of that too, I'm gonna make that a tiny bit darker up in there. So let's go in there. Okay. And we wanna blend that out. So there's no hard edges. There we go. We can also add in a little darker bit of color underneath where that petal is folding over. You're just using that same technique. There we go. So pretty and look at the beautiful contrast. And it really gives you that sense of depth. Go in and feather that just with that damp brush. There we go. Now I, for the longest time, did not do this much detail, but ever since I got this brush, I'm finding I kind of like it. Now just with a damp brush, I go up against that. And maybe one more, a little bit up in here, because that's underneath. Wash and rinse my brush. There you go. 
look at how beautiful already all the interest we've got in there now for our little pod up here let's go into our green and we'll create a little bit of a shadow up here so using that same technique wash her into my brush and I don't want to put my arm in front of you and just smoothing out that edge just like that now you can go back in once you do that and add in a little bit of green just touch in pretty okay I could even get a tiny bit darker and I want it to look a little bit like a shadow so let's see if you mix complementary colors on your color wheel you get the shadowy colors so purples and yellows create a shadowy color so let's try and mix a little bit of purple with some yellow and look at what a beautiful shadow color we get. And we're just gonna use a very, very light wash of that. Look how pretty. Beautiful. And that creates that shadowy effect, but yet still honors that purple hue in there. Now we could go in and do this here so pick up a little bit more of that. And add that in here. Look how beautiful. So that is a really nice, coherent way to shadow your colors is just add their opposite on the color wheel. And that will create this natural shadowy effect. I'm gonna put a little bit of that, so let's make some more. Go into our purple, mix with my yellow I've already got here on my palette. And I'm going to shadow. Now that's a little bit dark, so I want to add more water. You just want a very light glaze of that. And I'm just going alongside these stigmas. Now I'm going to feather that out. So damp, clean brush. And it creates that shadowy effect. <coughs> Let's go in here and do the same. See how interesting that is? And then I'm gonna deepen, bring in some of that pink, some of my purple. And let's go in here. Again, this is, so I'm just building these layers. Now that has a little bit of a puddle, so I'm gonna pick that up. I don't want a puddle, that's too hard to control. Wet my brush, wipe it off, and feather that out. Look how pretty. Maybe go in and just darken the very bottom of that. It's really, really pretty. Okay, we can go in here and create, because that's kind of the lip of that petal. go. 
look at how we're building all this interest. I think I'm gonna go in here. And because this is in the back, I want it to look like it's a little bit darker and underneath this one. And maybe this one we can create a light purple wash. So pretty. Look at how just these different values make this so, so interesting. Softening that line, just wiping my brush. really really pretty and I might just add and this is where you'll need this fine tip brush like that so now I'm just kind of going in and playing really and adding values adding darker values to my painting I feel like I want to do a little bit here, so because it's connected to the pink, I'm going to add a lot of pink to that. Okay, and let's go in. And now feather it out. There we go. You could kind of pull some of those little lines out. And I'm keeping some of these white spaces in there because it's so interesting and I kind of like that. Just keep darkening up these dark values because when watercolor dries it dries a lot softer and lighter so sometimes you have to keep going in to darken these areas now I want to create bring in a little bit of my purple here but just ever so slightly I feel like it needs some here too. Okay. Try and do this upside down. There we go. And a little bit here, cause that's the underneath area. Now I've got too much water there so I'm going to tap off my brush maybe soak some of that up there we go so see how this is working now this could use maybe just a very light wash of that pink But as you can see, just changing the values can make such a big difference in your painting. There we go. And I could just keep going in and darkening up some of these areas using a darker value. So now I'm at about the point where I'm 90% paint. And... 10% water, wash and rinse my brush. There we go. Like that. I'm going to go in one more time, but gosh, sometimes I really get into this and just keep darkening and adding layers because it's so beautiful. 
Okay, before I get too carried away here, you can kind of do this on your own playing with these. Let's do these little uh, filaments coming out. And they were a pretty bright pink. So I'm using a medium value of my paint and I'm going to come out. I think what I'll actually do is let's get it wet first. Picking up my little Degato brush, laying down some water, and then go in with my six and create that beautiful little line and let it kind of spread. There you go. And then let's do that again. We got a few more here. Point press like that. I'm trying to get a little different color variation. That's why I added some water. And then here's another one. And another. There we go. Just going over that with a wet brush. And I noticed on a little picture I have here, these little dots in these were kind of brownish. So I'm gonna go ahead with that. Okay. Which I kind of like bringing in some earthiness. There we go. And now let's go on over to this little bud in the background. So because that's in the background, I want a very light value and kind of washing, not so detailed. So let's get this all wet here. I'm just laying down some water, but no puddles again. Just when it's shiny. So if I tilted my paper, it wouldn't flow. And I'm going to color that. Let's see, let's do some of this green because it's more like a bud. And look at how that's in the background because I painted it kind of washy. Okay. So it looks like it's in the background. I'm even gonna go up to it with just a wet brush and kind of let it fuzzy out. Okay, let's wet this area because here's the stem and we'll go into that with some green. And again, you want that to be a light value because you don't want that to be the center focus. So when that dries, it will be a little lighter. I might even add a little yellow in there. There we go. Now when that dries, it will be lighter. Okay, we could even do this leaf here. So let's wet our leaf. Just create a shine there. Go into our green. Let me pick up a little bit more of that green. Tip of my brush, light pressure. Start putting more pressure and using the side of my brush. Now, if you get that type of puddle, just spread it out. There we go. Okay, 
and we can go into that with a little bit darker green. Let's see, let me pick up my olive green here. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more water. And we can tap in. Look at that, so pretty. There we go. Okay, I think I'm basically done. I think this is really pretty. We could do more here, but I'm trying to keep this to 30 minutes for you all. But we could go into the tips of the petals, wash and rinse our brush, and pull some of that out. If you want, but you could be quite fine with just exactly how it was. feel like in here I could put another layer there soften that line at the edge of my brush and there you go I feel pretty good about this just how it is so I think I'm going to leave it I think it's quite beautiful and has a lot of nice depth in there. Oops, I did forget one of the little stamens. There we go. All right, everybody. I hope you have fun with this. I will um, figure out the um, drawing for this and happy to share that with you so you can draw it and then do some of these things I just shared with you. I hope that's helpful. And then I will be doing a Zoom class on this if you wanted to join us. I do two a month and uh, we go through and we're creating these things. And it's a good opportunity for you to get some hands-on training with me. So we can paint it together. You can stop and ask me questions. And it, they're quite fun. So there you go, everybody. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you give it a try. I will get the drawing up for you. And we'll also put the kit together for you if you like. Um, I sell those companion kits, they're only $5 and they're in my Etsy and then you can go through and paint these. I think this would be a really beautiful card. Okay everybody, I will talk to you soon. Thank you.